in this part we will look into nan memory basic uh, which is also called flash memory so here the reason why we call it flash memory is because of the speed with which we can store and uh, retrieve the data okay so the basic principle of flash memory is uh, is nan cell uh, in few uh, in few flash memories they also use nor cell but uh, let's look at nan cell so here data is not stored in uh, in like on magnetic disks or uh, tapes but rather they are stored in electronic components that we are all familiar with transistors so here uh, the basic component of flash memory is nan cell uh, which is a npn transistor okay so here you have uh, two n nodes source and drain okay and then at the center you have a p node which is formed with layers of uh, silicon substrate so you have an insulator and then floating gate insulator again and then control gate okay so control gate is used to charge and read the nand cell and source and the drain gate are used to measure the flow of uh, electrons between uh, within the transistor okay so now given the structure of nand cell let's see how we can read data from a nand cell so here zero is stored in an nand cell by charging the floating gate okay so when the floating gate is charged when you apply a small amount of voltage to control gate there is no flow of current from source to drain this indicates that the nand cell has zero stored okay similarly when there is no charge in the floating gate then we assume that the value that is stored in the cell is 1 here when you when we apply small voltage to control gate the current passes that which indicates uh, the floating gate is not charged consequently the data that is stored in the cell is 1 okay this is how we distinguish between 0 and 1 in each cell so to write a nand cell what we do is we apply high voltage to control gate so to to write a 0 we just apply very high voltage to control gate which leads to charging of floating gate okay this this makes a charge stored into the floating gate okay. similarly when we want to write a one into an nand gate we just apply the same high voltage to the silicon substrate at the bottom okay so which actually pulls down all the charge from the floating gate resulting in a value that is stored in the cell to be one so this is how we write uh, into an and gate uh, and consequently storing zero or one okay this is at cell level but at memory level like at uh, at the level that we use in our systems so nan memory is usually in the form of uh, a thin die like uh, you can see if you have seen a ram module it contains a uh, it thin a platter of small components so that's how nan memory or like flash memory is organized so here the entire material is called die and there are two two planes like more than two planes on on a single die and each plane is further divided into a block and then each block is further divided into a page where each page contains uh, these nan cells okay so here the similar to sectors in magnetic disks so page is also a uh, page is the unit of access in uh, flash memory okay so page size is a uh, uh, similar to sectors it's between 5 to 12 to 4 kilobytes okay an interesting thing about flash memory or rather uh, a bad thing about flash memory is uh, the writes needs to be for uh like preceded by a complete eraser okay what we mean by that so here uh because of the design of nan memory or like flash memory we cannot go we cannot make the cell go from 0 to 1 at, at page wise okay at, we cannot make an individual cell go from 0 to 1 that means 
uh, note that uh, when a cell is zero, that means it is charged. When a cell is one, means it's not charged. Means the charge is not stored. Okay. So uncharging, we cannot uh, remove the charge from uh, from individual cells. Unfortunately, in flash memory, so we can only uh, remove the charge at block level. So not even at the page level, but at a block level. Okay. So now let's say when you have to write some data, okay, into a flash, uh, into some page. Okay. Let's say you want to write uh, write a one. Okay. Initially everything is charged, so everything is zero. So now let's say when you want to write one. Okay. So unfortunately we cannot go from zero to one cell wise so what we have to do is we need to take the block of the page where we want to write we first need to convert all the cells in the block to one and then we can convert the individual cells which are one to zero okay so that's why any write in flash memory needs a complete erasure of, of the block in which the page resides this and this consequently this leads to huge write delays compared to reads reads is easy you just read the data whereas writes require uh, any write to a cell needs write to the entire block so however uh, modern designs of uh, flash memory the way we, we use mod uh, flash memory in terms of ssds that we use in our laptops and in our systems they nicely uh, sidestep this this, uh, this problem so when you look at commercial ssds that you buy buy on amazon so you see that they have this very huge data rates for instance here if you look at uh, samsung ssd it's just 109 dollars as one tb of disk space and then the access rate is six gb per second which is insane and the right rights performance is almost same as read performance although in principle you can see that writes always needs to do an eraser of complete block but you don't notice that on your real uh, on your, on the flash device that you use on your laptop the reason for this is a uh, flash transition translation layer so here every ssd okay internally comes with uh, its own firmware its own uh, component called flash translation layer, which hides the arrays before write. Basically what it does is uh, similar to page tables, flash translation layer maps from logical blocks to the real blocks, okay? And it exposes logical blocks to the operating system and the operating system just deals with the logical blocks, okay? SSD internally uses flash translation layer to convert from logical blocks or like logical pages to real pages and real blocks okay so that way when we have to when we when we need to write something ftl actually maintains a list of free blocks and whenever we need to write it just takes a free block and then it copies the data from old block to the new block and then it rewrites the data into the into this new block and then it maintains, uh, it does garbage collection of all the invalid blocks, okay? That way it uh, offsets the cost for erasure before every write because it, uh, it maintains a pool of uh, free blocks whenever a write needs, to write needs to happen, it quickly copies the data from old block to the fresh block and then it rewrites just, uh, it, re it rewrites the data in the new block and it puts the old block into garbage collect which it will erase later when it has time okay so that way although writes require complete erasure we don't see um, we don't see the performance hit when like in practice when we actually use ssds in our systems thank you